Okay. <laughs> I don't really have an intro <laughs> for this. Well, I have an idea. Okay. Since we already were kind of talking about it, mm -hmm. I figure we just talk about the eyeshadow again. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Very pr pretty. It, are we calling this lilac or lavender? Uh, this is periwinkle. Periwinkle. Okay. This is periwinkle. It's just pastel. I okay. thought that the pastel shadow would be very nice for the period. However, once we started watching the movie, I thought, you know, I probably should just rim my eyes in red instead yeah. since everyone is just weeping the Constantly. entire time. Well, hundred percent of this movie is like, especially Kate Winslet is just <laughs> oh, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then the mother, she just like perpetually yeah. red. And I think it's just because a lot of it is she has blue eyes and that's just, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. But I was looking at every other actor that had blue eyes and I'm like, why your hair is not red? Okay. I feel like I need two coffee mugs again. <laughs> We're four years into this. This is the first time I've done this. Why do you need two coffee mugs? It's a 30 Rock joke. Oh, okay. Maybe I should just hold something. Okay, yeah, this feels more natural. Is that right? So as you can tell, Will looks a little different today. Just a touch. This is our, uh, she's been on before, but this is our introduction of Rachel as uh, a recurring contributing <laughs> content producer with us. <laughs> Or a guest host would work as well. <laughs> Trying to hype it up. I appreciate it. No, I it like up. it. I like it. I like it. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. Yay, How are Rachel. You doing? We're so excited. I'm excited to be here. Thanks. So <laughs> um, I'll do the little spiel. This is, so I'm watching the show. I'm Kristen. I'm Rachel. This is Rachel sitting in for Will. <laughs> we are a twice weekly podcast. Uh, and we talk about movies and TV and music and all things pop culture and uh, today, we are going to talk about the 1995 classic, Sense and Sensibility. Woo! Get ready to lose your heart and come to your senses. Academy Award winner, Emma Thompson, Alan Rickman, Kate Winslet, and Hugh Grant. Sense and Sensibility. So, to start, do you want to talk about your relationship with Jane Austen? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I, I feel like trash saying this, but I have not actually read all the way through any of Jane Austen's novels. Oh, not even a single one. No. Okay. Cause I haven't read three of them. No, I, again, I feel like trash cause I love to read. I'm a reader, uh, which we've talked about. Um, I got partially through Pride and Prejudice and I think just life got in the way mm -hmm. and so that I just never finished it and then never went back just because it is a little bit of mental gymnastics just kind of having to get my brain into that time period the language is a lot they yeah. also do that kind of thing where it's like Mr. F and then just like a whole blank <laughs> space and I'm like whose last name is it am I supposed to know who that is I don't know who that is <laughs> yeah are they related is yeah. this a love interest what are we doing mm -hmm. but so with this movie um I saw it by accident Really? Yeah. Uh, when it came out, um, we were at the video store. Mm. I know. Many moons ago. Yeah. Uh, we were at the video store, and I remember seeing a trailer or commercial or something um, for Emma. Ooh, okay. And so, but I could not remember what it was called, but then I saw, I think, like, the the video tape box or whatever for Sense and Sensibility, and yeah. I was like, that's it! And yeah. I got you home. Got vibed with the outfits, and you were like, it's gotta be it. Yeah, close enough. And then I was watching it, and I was like, where is Gwyneth Paltrow? Yeah. I was so confused. Nowhere and to be found. It was just absolutely delightful, and I haven't revisited it as much as I, I would like to have. Ah, uh, it, it's just... Oh, good. It is. So good. It is. And, you know, Alan Rickman has never super done it for me. Ma'am. Sirs. Non-binary folk. Everyone. Every, all, all those who appreciate the dudes. I just, his hair. Mm -hmm. His hair, his teeth, I can't. But his hair, yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, 100%. So that actually dovetails beautifully into how <laughs> I came to this movie. Perfect. Which is... That when I was in college, there was a like music slash video store that was on the corner of uh, King Street in Charleston. Ooh, okay. It is no longer there, and it makes me sad every time I go back. R.I.P. So they would do this cool thing where you could literally rent any of the movies they had for sale, and then when you brought it back, they would just sell it at a discounted rate or keep it for rental. Oh. So I would go there all the time. And they also, it was like $4 rentals. 
And it was DVDs. Hmm. So it was like, it was sweet. I loved that place. It was called Millennium Music. Oh. I wish they still existed. <laughs> <laughs> so I would just go there and just rent movies mm-hmm. while I was in college all the time mm-hmm. instead of doing my schoolwork. And so I got into an Alan Rickman thing. Okay. Because okay. I had just recently, my friend had just recently made me watch Love Actually. Mm-hmm. And the first couple Harry Potters were coming out. Mm-hmm. And his voice is magnetic. And was, I was like... It's like chocolate. I was like, I'm going to go back. I'm yeah. going to see some more stuff. And so I watched this really, really weird-ass movie called... Um, oh, God. The, ne- the Next Big Adventure or something like that. Mm-hmm. It's like from Peter Pan, the line from Peter Pan, death, oh. death is but the next great adventure. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Where he plays this like theater star who like falls in inappropriate love with the ingenue that's in the play. <laughs> but it was so hot. <laughs> and then I was like, hey, he's in this too. So I rented Sense and Sensibility and I was like fully obsessed from that moment on. I'm really surprised that you saw that so late. Yeah. And I saw that so, so early. early. That feels... Yeah. That feels backwards. In yeah. A way. Well, I also I didn't watch the '95 Pride and Prejudice until I was like almost thirty. I didn't see that until like a few years ago, probably. Yeah. I just don't like it as much. No, no, no not as good. No. Love Jennifer Jennifer L. Love Colin Firth. It's not as good, and no. I apologize. Um, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> No, we have to tell Teresa we're sorry yes, because Teresa, she loves it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know you think the 2005 one is dirty, no, but it's, it's just hard it's not. not. It's way better. And then for just Jane Austen in general, I have read Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, and Emma. Okay. And then what is it? Mansfield Park, Northanger Abbey, and um I, Oh, um, Persuasion. Oh, okay. I actually have read Persuasion, so I've only not read two. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so you were so much more well read. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just, I'm in awe. Just uh, incredible. Thank you. But I have a set of all of them. I just haven't like gone through and actually read them. And I think I want to say this one might be my favorite. I really yeah. enjoyed it. And I was sitting there the whole time because I, I love the 2005 Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. I love everything about it. This was almost more delightful in a way. Parts where, of it for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, there was still like the fraught love and yeah. love interest and all of that kind of stuff. But I just found myself a little bit more cozy watching mm, this. Yes, yeah. Um, and there was a little bit more of a brightness to it mm-hmm. where I I don't know, in a in a weird way, I felt compared to to this, Pride and Prejudice feels like weirdly acerbic. Well, it is. I, and that's the thing I think for me. It, I was like thinking about it while we were watching it. And because you had looked over me and you were like, Colonel Brandon is your favorite, right? Mm-hmm. He is absolutely my favorite Austin hero. Mm-hmm. I love Mr. Darcy. I think Mr. Darcy is so great. And Mr. Knightley is right up there too. They're mm-hmm. all three really tied. Mm-hmm. But something about Colonel Brandon, first of all, it's because it's the secondary love story. Yes. It's because Eleanor is the like Lizzie Bennett, if mm-hmm. we're going to be making these comparisons. So it's the secondary love story. And he's also just, he's so tender and he doesn't make it about him. Mm-hmm. He doesn't make the love story about him. He's just softer. I mean, he's, he, yeah. he's still very, like, keeps things close to the chest. Yeah. Um, like a man. Yes. <laughs> like an English man. Like an, like an English that. man in the 1700s. Oh, my God. <laughs> but there was, there was a softness to him mm-hmm. and he was much more gentle. Yeah. Um, which I appreciated so much, so, so much. A hundred percent. And to that point, I prefer him to Edward because Edward is very bumbling and just kind of an idiot. <laughs> okay. Apparently, <laughs> here's the thing. Apparently now I've all only read Sense of Sensibility once. Okay. And so evidently he is just like a boring drip in the book. Mm-hmm. But casting Hugh Grant made him more way more appealing and gave him like way more to do which is fair yes but also still kind of boring yes like, i mean pretty boring hugh grant can only do so much yeah. i mean he's doing he a, can do a lot but yeah. it's only so much he is doing so much with the stammering and his face yeah and i feel like that's all you can really do but god just yeah again i say so i explained it to you a little bit while we were watching but my husband walked out of his office while we were watching a scene with Hugh Grant 
and he was doing the stammer. And my husband just said, this is a classic Scott John Dan Steve, isn't it? And so we're going to just need a little clip from that episode of Bob's Burgers with the guy stammering. On your left, you'll see the, um, uh, well, uh, the uh, famous London Tube. And on your right, you'll see, uh, well, uh, Big Ben. And up ahead, you'll see the, uh, um, uh, the, the Royal Garden, where the princess enjoys uh, tea with her um, family. He puts the glamour and stammer. Because it is exactly that. You know, it's so funny when you... When you said it at first, well, no, actually, when Will said it, for a second, I was like, am I having a stroke? (laughs) Because I, there were so many names put together and I was like, no, that, that's not right. And then you repeated it and I'm like, okay, I am not having a stroke. Very good. Um, To get back to Colonel Brandon and the men in this movie, I think we have to talk about the scoundrel. Yes. Mr. Willoughby. Of course. Played by Emma Thompson's now real life husband. This is where they met. Bless. I just, Alan Rickman, 100% of the time over that guy. Uh, outside of this movie, other dude, Willoughby could get it all day long for me. Okay. I just, I feel like um, I would, um, how do I want to explain this? Alan Rickman would be someone like a dad. Oh. That I would be like, hey. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I find, like, handsome, but, like, very much in, like, a very far away type of way. I see. Yeah. He just, he's never really, like, pew, 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 or anything like that. <laughs> oh, for everyone new. So when I really like something, my nips fly off. So ah, you're welcome. Yeah, okay. so pew, 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 pew. Yep. Um, okay, we'll- my nips fly off for <laughs> Alan. <laughs> it is, to be honest, mostly his voice. Yeah. But I also really like the shape of his nose. It's a good nose. Yeah. It's a so good like, nose. So, like, even when he's horrible in Harry Potter, mm-hmm. I'm, like, there. I'm, like, no, like, you're being a dick and it's whatever, but that just keep talking and it's fine. Well, I mean, you and Will talk about it all the time. It's always a good, like, mark of a friendship if you're not both interested in the same The dudes. same men. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You but can I mean, have your scoundrel and I will take my tender-hearted... Which? M- Colonel Brandon. I mean, not to, like, put my business out there too much, <laughs> but... Willoughby is right up my alley. <laughs> I went to therapy about it, guys. I'm working on it. Rachel loves a scoundrel, y'all. But God, when he whipped out his pocket sonnet, I was like, hook, line, and sinker. It's like just not even one of the better sonnets. No. But <laughs> what man? What man? D- did Brandon have a pocket Shakespeare book in his in his? Jacket? He, he was reading Marianne poetry at the end. There. And he did put some gusto behind yeah. that. So yeah. props that this man can do iambic pentameter. No. Snaps all around. Amazing. He's yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. R.I.P. also. We yeah. miss yes. him every day. Yes, every day. Um, yeah, so what who do, who out of the ones that you've seen, who's your favorite Austin man? Mm, prob uh, honestly, probably Darcy. Okay. Um, I think just I think he's like third from the ones that I've read. Uh, yeah, probably Mr. Darcy, just because you can just you can feel the passion yeah. and it's just it's not even brimming. It's like coming out of his pores. He's trying so hard to keep it in. Mm. And he, well, it's not proper. Yeah. And I just again, probably something I you know, just therapy it just because he's a little mean. Yeah, he's a little bit of a dick. So but. For me, that's the mark because Lizzie can take it. Oh, I mean, yeah. They yeah, yeah, yeah. do it to each other. So mm-hmm. for me, that just means that he can keep up with her. Sure. And so I would want someone to be able to keep up with me. Yeah. So I like that. But I very much appreciate Colonel Brandon. Yeah. So he, I might end up watching this again just by myself. And I, he's probably going to soar through the ranks very quickly. He's so good. Yeah. He's so soft. And he also, it's like he's the one that has the like tragic backstory, mm-hmm. which I, like so appreciate because and also because it's only tragic because he tried so hard to do the right thing and like it he wasn't allowed right to do the right thing god you know being a lady even now but like being a lady Oof. just ain't it it ain't <laughs> it ain't it a lot of the times yeah. but like it woof not in the 1700s no to the point that i made the note i don't think i would appreciate being referred to as a bargain no <laughs> also <laughs> I remember the last time I watched this, I made a comment and I was like, God, if I were alive at that time, I would really rather be a younger sister so that anyone might know my first name. Yeah. Y- yes. It's a poor Eleanor is always Miss Dashwood. And then it's like Marianne. And yeah. I'm like, ah. Oh, God. <laughs> to be, I mean, and I'm 
I'm the oldest daughter. Yeah. I mean, so oh, what? What pressure? Yeah. What pressure? I mean, I would be of no consequence because I have two brothers. Right. But you just yikes. have to marry decently well. Yeah. Yeah. Yikes. Mm-hmm. Um, can we talk about Fanny? Yeah. Fuck Fanny. Do we want to talk about how Fanny sucks super hard? Like, it's like sucks worse than almost every other Austin rival. Never liked the smell of books. Yeah. Death to Fanny. Yeah. Hard pass. That's yeah. a hard pass. Also, like, John, John Dashwood is totally prepared to, like, honor his father's wishes. Oh, and yeah. be like, here's 3,000 pounds. Yeah. That, that's nice. That 3,000 pounds is a lot of money. Yeah. And especially it, for four women. Yeah, especially for four women. And so it's just sort of like... That she just keeps talking him down so that it's like, I'll give them 20 pounds now and then. You know, Dashwood. Dashwood. 500 <laughs> pounds for four women is more than likely or more than whatever. And, oh, I got real Southern there at the end. You, you but, did it, though. That was good. Um, so I looked at you at one point and I, was, and I went to go say something. Oh, and I was yeah, like, okay. no, I want to save it. So when Fanny was discussing that 500 pounds a year was ample enough for a woman, for, for four women... Um, slightly triggered, just kind of like, I'm going to get a little political for a second, Mm -hmm. but like with our government saying that like $1,200 was like adequate, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, Mm -hmm. where it's just kind of like, that's just simply not enough money. Like that doesn't pay my mortgage. No. So. No. (laughs) Like, ma'am, I think you were spending 500 pounds a week for someone to come in and roll those little tiny little like single uh, circles. Also for hat feathers that she was like making that stupid hat at the end. Yeah. Yeah. And just the the circle curls Mm -hmm. took me all the way out. Not Why? the best era for hair. Why and how? How yeah. d- how does that happen? Even Eleanor, towards the end, yeah. you could see it in the back. Mm-hmm. How do you do that? Tiny, tiny, tiny curling iron. Like a really narrow curling iron. Ew. Yeah. I don't want it. So that's the other thing is like, I really appreciated the 2020 Emma mm-hmm. because, yes, it's all those horrible ringlets, but they were even more stylized mm-hmm. in a way that I was like, this feels fine, though. Yeah. Because this is just trying to be, like, a normal hairdo. <laughs> and yeah. it's like, no. The only one who can play off the hair is Kate Winslet. Yeah. She looks like she stepped out of a Botticelli painting. I was going to say the exact same words. And her her face in this movie. I have chills. Her hair in this movie. So this was two years before Titanic. Stunning. Also, she was terrified of Alan Rickman. Really? She thought he was going to get her fired. Because oh, she why? didn't think she was good enough. Oh. And I'm just like, oh. But then they, like, actually were, like, friends. They, like, became really friends. Because he's, like, like a super nice man. And then you are going to get so mad. Um, oh, God. Okay. Feeling self-conscious about herself, Kate Winslet was skipping meals in an attempt to lose weight. Emma Thompson noticed and told her losing weight is absolutely wrong for the part and absolutely wrong for you. And then Emma Thompson gave Kate Winslet a copy of a book called The Beauty Myth, encouraging her to embrace her body. And Winslet has since credited Thompson as having a major influence in her life. And they're still very good friends. Oh, my God. <laughs> camera just- one, camera two, <laughs> camera three. Your body is beautiful. Your body is beautiful. I don't like mine right now, but your body is beautiful. We're all good. We're all yeah. good. That's lovely. Well, and you'll remember that two years later when Titanic came out, everybody was like, ew, why does he like Kate Winslet? Anyway, she's so fat in that movie. And I was like, bitch, her waist is snatched in that movie. She (laughs) is stunning. She's also just one of the most beautiful women in the world. Yeah. I I remember, I mean, we're just, we're, just going to talk about Titanic for a second. But I remember we when she... We should do Titanic. Yeah. Oh my God. Because Will and I haven't done it yet either. We could all three do Titanic. I saw that movie eight times in the movie theater. I think I might be the only person I know that only saw it once. Even Will saw it more than once because he was going with a girlfriend. What? Yeah, only once in the That's theater. That's nuts. I have since seen it 15 or 20 well, times. Well, yeah, but, but with that, <laughs> wow. But I just remember when she was doing the press tour, like when she was on Oprah and, you know, talking about her body. And I just remember I was like 10, 10, 11 years old. And I was just like, but she's simply not fat, though. I don't (laughs) understand. Yeah, same. And I mean, Emma Thompson, bless him, just all over the place. Bless Emma Thompson Mm -hmm. for everything. But I mean, what a good person. Yeah. What a good person. And especially a woman in Hollywood to be like, it's not correct. So I feel okay. Part of it is a British thing mm-hmm. because the Brits care slightly less mm-hmm. about getting fat because mm-hmm. it just happens. Also, 
I have no proof to back this up, but I have a feeling that Emma Thompson may have had a decent amount of therapy at this point because uh. I think that uh, Kenneth Branagh was not a great husband. Oh, yeah. So he is a, a genius on all other levels. Um, I think he, he was not a great husband to Emma Thompson. I feel like that's that checks. I think it was a volatile relationship is Probably. the thing. They were both like. Was she his muse? Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, could they were uh, much ado about nothing? Oh yes, yes, yes. They're yes, Benedict yes. and Beatrice. Yes, yeah. oh so good. It's so good. And so they would like ad- adapt Shakespeare together and mm-hmm. stuff. And she, but then she adapted this. She wrote the screenplay. Did she? Which I swear to God, I had no idea that it happened so late. But evidently, she is the first person to ever win an Oscar for both acting and screenwriting. Stop. Which feels bonkers, right? Well, I'm glad it was her. I yeah. mean, if anyone should deserve it, yeah. Super weird, though. I was like, that can't be true. And apparently it is. Huh. Although I don't know what she won for for acting. That leads me to my next thing, which is, are you more of a Marianne or an Eleanor? Ooh, that, ooh that's a very good question. Because obviously it's the mind versus the heart. Sure. So. Yeah. But it's a still waters run deep thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. Naturally, I probably am a Marianne. Society has taught me to be an Eleanor. Fair enough. So I I love the idea because I am a romantic, you know, not even deep down. I'm very surface level romantic. I love the idea of just a fanciful love and all of that. I would not walk five miles no, in the just rain. Just stare at some bitch's house? <laughs> yes. Some scoundrel's house? Some fuck boy's house? Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. No, hard no. would slam back into Eleanor. But Eleanor... She's she's too closed off, which I mean, you know, her cup runneth over with emotions yeah. later, which I appreciated. My my favorite scene in the movie. Oh, it's <laughs> so good. So good. I have two favorite scenes in this movie and they are both Emma Thompson emoting. <laughs> yes. 100%. <laughs> yes. Her losing her shit at the end. Yeah. Phenomenal. But what about you? Who are you more like? I think I'm an Eleanor with a Margaret rising. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. That's good. I love Margaret. We we stand Margaret Dashwood in yeah. this house. <laughs> Baby yeah. sister Margaret is the absolute cutest. She almost loves Edward more than Eleanor does. Oh, yeah. And it's like her whole vibe is cute. She's like really precocious and she's really silly and she's like super smart mm-hmm. and she's really well read and everything. I just think she's precious. She's great. Um, Although she does not get to go to London. I don't think that's fair. Well, no problem because we need to get her uh, treehouse contractor on the phone because them shits was sweet. Sorry. Um, Thomas built that. Margaret didn't build that. Well, I know. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but we need to we need to like get him. Yeah, on there. Well, let's she was, get, let's she, get him some work. She probably was like telling him what to do. Yeah, she just so she designed it. So oh. she needs her own architecture firm. Yeah, <laughs> Margaret Dashwood Architect, <laughs> licensed architect. I feel like she also would like Moonlight as like a cartographer for her Atlas. Yeah, things. for sure. She's got those cool red shoes at the end. Oh yeah, she's like coming down the thing. Mm-hmm. No, she's amazing. I no. think she's super great. I liked her a lot. But yeah, I I think my husband would disagree, and he would say I'm Marianne. Because he once he once told me I was always at the extremes mm-hmm. of emotion, to which I sh- shrieked at him, I am not. <laughs> I just use the ends more. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you're always, there's so much emotion. And I was like, I, I just am less in the middle. I'm just on the ends more often. Yeah. Whereas I mm. will do the thing. I will do the responsibility. I will just yeah. cry when I'm doing it. Yeah, exactly. So. I think I think the right move is to be a healthy mix of Eleanor yes. and Marianne. I, I would agree. But I, I, I like to view myself as an Eleanor. Yes. More of an Eleanor. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about that the whole time. But I mean, it's just an obvious fight between the head and the heart. Yeah. And, you know, because it's what, I mean, every single person on the planet does that. Absolutely. Um, But just because there were good arguments for both, I just cannot just, I can't catch the flu on purpose just because some fuckboy hurt my feelings. <laughs> I don't think she caught the flu on purpose. <laughs> Girl, she was she was ready to walk off the ends of the earth. That's true. I mean, straight up Ophelia style, just five miles in the driving rain to go look at a ramshackle house that he's not even in right then. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure when Brandon found her, she was just laying in that field. Oh, yeah. Just straight up. No, 100 percent. She was. I'm done. My days are over. <laughs> Take me now. Good night, sweet prince. <laughs> oh, God. Blech. Oh, man. No. Very funny. Um, So 
I did want to say that. So in addition to Eleanor losing her shit at the end, which because it the fact she's losing her shit at Happy News. Oh yeah, because she finds out that Edward is not in fact married to, uh, not Fanny Lucy to Lucy mm-hmm. Steele, which we'll talk about that bitch in a minute. But I love the fact that she he's like, oh no, my brother is married, and she just is like. <laughs> For like five solid minutes. And it's very, it's very that moment when Brenda Blethyn and Pride and Prejudice is like, everybody leave the room immediately. Mm-hmm. And she's like, because Marianne gets Margaret and uh-huh. Gemma, Gemma Jones is like, let's go. Oh, and I love that there were no words spoken because yeah. I thought of that moment exactly. Yep. But I love that everyone was just kind of like, get the fuck out. Gotta get out. Yep. And so then she just is like absolutely losing her crap. And I love it. It's so funny. It's such a good performance because for a minute you're like, oh, she's doing too much. And then you keep watching it. You're like, no, this is like the breakdown of like probably two years at this point, Mm -hmm. given how long travel takes and everything. Mm -hmm. But the other moment I like so much is when she yells at Marianne in London. Yeah. When she finds out that Lucy's engaged to Edward. And she's like, when she, specifically when she says, I could have like, I could have given you proof enough of a broken heart, like mm-hmm. even for you. And she's just like, mm-hmm. I love it. I love Emma Thompson. That's why we need to like healthily emote. Uh, but back to mm-hmm. back to that scene when um, after Edward shows up and everyone's like super awkward. Mm-hmm. And then Margaret just talks about the weather. It, she, because takes the, she takes the note. She took the note. So good. <laughs> and even still, Marianne was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Shut up. <laughs> I thought it was very appropriate. No, was Everyone good. was hella awkward. It was so so it's good. like lovely weather we're having. Well, and then he it's just it's one of it's those conversations that are so stilted and so British where he's just like, Yes, the roads were very dry. That and I made a note <laughs> about this. That's the one thing that I both love and hate about Austin novels or really any stories that take place yeah. in England because no one fucking communicates. And I know that's the whole thing because then we wouldn't have the stories. But sometimes it just kind of like it a lot of times, yeah. if I'm being honest, just hurts because like just say one more thing. Just the one more thing. Of course. Well, I mean, part of that is like entertainment. You can't everybody can't say exactly what they mean or there would be no conflict to right. work through or whatever. But I think have you read Jane Eyre? No, you should read Jane Eyre because I the first time I read it, but just like, I don't know, five years ago, mm-hmm. maybe just for shits. I was just like, I'm going to read Jane Eyre. Mm hmm. Mr. Rochester and Jane have a lot of very direct conversations. Really? About, like, I mean, he obviously doesn't tell her about his crazy wife in the attic, but <laughs> other than that, yeah, they have a lot of very direct conversations. Like, he literally is like, "You do you not think me handsome? And she's like, nope. <laughs> Love it. It's Love amazing. To see it. And then it was a really bold move casting Michael Fassbender, but, you know. That, mm. <laughs> ma'am, you are, you are incorrect in your yeah. assessment, but okay. <laughs> sure. Fun fact, random fact about Jane Eyre. So I've not read that mm-hmm. and I've not read anything from the Bronte, Bronte sisters. Um, but I was on a date. This is a couple of years ago at this point, And we went to Trivia, this like bar in St. Paul, because I, I used to live in Minnesota, guys. <laughs> so I, I don't remember. Oh, it was um, the pseudonym that she wrote under. But so they like said the name that she had written under and then... Um, it, it there was very very little clues as to like how anyone would get this. Yeah. I'm doing a very poor job telling the story, but because <laughs> I don't remember a lot of the details. But so I literally kind of like worked it in my brain, and I was like, and it was about the one of the like the stories that they were well known for. Sure. And so I was like, I barely, I feel like it's Jane Eyre. Um, and I think they said the name of the estate mm-hmm. in the in the question. So I was like, oh screw it. So I wrote down Jane Eyre and then uh took it up to the DJ. And then he was like, literally one person in this entire bar got it. Nice. And he was like, I don't I don't know if I should be afraid or impressed. <laughs> and he was like, it is, it's Jane Eyre. And I was like, boo, look at me. I don't know how I got there, but I got there. <laughs> I don't remember the name of the estate from Jane Eyre, actually. Thornfield. There you go. Thornfield Hall. Yeah. But so the mental gymnastics I did to get there, but I was very well, hey, proud of myself. Good job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You should have walked up to the... Trivia guy and been like, you should be scared. It's scared that you should be. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I sh- I should have. Really, I think my date was really kind of like, who who is this person? Okay, it's Wuthering Heights that's the problem. Yes. If Wuthering Heights is your favorite book, 
then you might be crazy. Yes. Jane Eyre is fine. Yeah. But it's Kathy and Heathcliff who are just in like a toxic tornado together. I think he was more or less just kind of like, why is she so excited about some dumbass book? Ugh. Yeah. Well, that was, we, it was only a handful of dates with that person. You're all so. good out of that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, a cad. A cad would never like a, someone who is well read. Yeah. Except Willoughby. But. Yeah, but OK, that's the thing about Willoughby, though, is he is well read because he knows it's going to get him chicks. Yep. He read like Willoughby read, you know, like the feminine mystique mm-hmm. to to get laid. Yep. Yeah. So then Colonel I'm- Brandon read it because he wants to understand Marianne better. <laughs> Oh, again, I say hook, line, and sinker. Yeah. <laughs> if I were to go, okay, let's think of this. If I were to go for any of the Austin scoundrels, I think it would have to be Mr. Wickham. Really? He's he's too mean. He's, he's the, mean. He's the hottest one, though. Rupert Friend is the hottest of all three. Well, yeah. yeah. But even, even Rupert Friend, it just... That hair and the like. It's good, but he's The still... banter about being the shame of the regiment because he's bad at ribbons. Ugh. <laughs> Me. <laughs> All right, so we both have our own brand of fuckboy. Yay! <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> Doing great. And your number one hero is my number three hero. So perfect. It's perfect. Perfect. Mr. Knightley Love is this. a very close second, mm. but very specifically now the Johnny Flynn, Mr. Knightley. Did did uh, you and Will talk about that? Who, like, mm-hmm. who, who is his... Dude. Oh. Uh, oh, he really liked Mr. Knightley. Mm. Yeah. Well, okay. He's blonde. Ah, okay. And he is so far the only one. Perfect. To the point that I was pissed before the movie came out. Uh-huh. I was like, a blonde Mr. Knightley? Because it's Jeremy Northam mm. in the in the old one. Mm-hmm. And I was like, are you out of your mind? Blonde? <laughs> Ugh. And then Johnny Flynn just like... Just right out of the park. Out of the park for me. Mm. Yeah. He was so good. When he like... Literally is furiously getting undressed and then he just lays down on the ground because he can't, he couldn't tell Emma that he loved her. <laughs> Amazing. I love it. Speaking of clothes, if we could just bring back that uh, the male fashion. Oof. It's just yeah. real nice. I, it would, I would almost definitely force Will to join the military so he could get one of those red coats. Yeah. With all the gold brocade mm-hmm. and then just throw fistfuls of coins in I the will, air. I will say... Um, Alan Rickman in that officer's uniform, he did get a little like pew pew. He got he got some pew pews. Oh yeah, but um yeah, the coin tossing. Um, I feel like it should be. I mean, yes, please. Um, I feel like that should have been the other way around. Also, that was too much money to be throwing to a crowd. You think the crowd should have thrown money to him? Yeah, but he's like the wealthy landowner. So I just got married. Give me presents. Well, I'm sure they got lots of presents. Well, yeah, give me presents. Money. Money. More yeah. money. <sighs> money, please. Money, please. Yeah. Nobody threw money at my wedding. Nobody threw money at my wedding either. Mm-mm. Mm. Next time. Yeah. That's a good segue into telling <laughs> you guys to please go check out our Patreon. Yes. <laughs> Do it. <clears throat> Patreon.com slash so I'm watching this show. Uh, we are putting a lot of things on there right now. Drag Race Season 7. And there's lots of other stuff already on there. The Boys, American Horror Stories, multiple versions, Raised by Wolves, Will keeps mentioning, even though that <laughs> show didn't do any business. Um, lots of stuff like that. River, some old Riverdale and stuff. So definitely go check it out. We're getting some new stuff down there pretty quick. And throw us a couple coins, because then we can make you more stuff. Ooh. If I had my bracelets on, they would be like Ooh, a jingling jingle, noise. Jingle. But I was nice to Will, and I decided to leave them off. No, yeah. That's, I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. fine. So... Did you have any final thoughts on Sense and Sensibility? Um, I just really enjoyed it. So thank you for suggesting it because it was it was lovely. Um, especially I don't know. I I think it's really interesting with like this last year. I, you know, I know myself and a lot of other people have been like revisiting a lot of like yeah. old classics, mm-hmm. and this is one that I just completely forgot about, and it should be a constant in a rotation. Yeah, there's a lot of like, um, well, evidently this movie got basically greenlit and budgeted like straight off the back of Little Women. Oh, wow. Like Little Women was so successful. And then they were like, yeah, all right, mm-hmm. do do this. And it was apparently the most money that Ang Lee had ever been given to make a movie. Also, Ang Lee. <clears throat> yeah. That was a name I did not expect to see in the What beginning. a career, man. Yeah. Brokeback Mountain, this, that bad Hulk movie. <laughs> like... It's just like 
obviously also lots of stuff in, I believe he's uh, Taiwanese, but uh, yeah, I mean, he's done so, the life of Pi, lust caution. I mean, it's crouching tiger, hidden dragon. It's wow. just like, it's so much stuff, but it's so eclectic. In yeah. A way. The ice storm. That movie is excellent. Yeah. He's just got such a, such a like bonkers career that it, it, impresses me we love a multifaceted director yeah 100 percent. because if i'm being honest sense and sensibility and brokeback mountain are like potentially two of the like most romantic movies i've seen since i've that were like made since i've been alive yeah you know what i mean yeah i just love them both i think they're so good and they're so interesting and apparently lust caution is hot as balls Ooh. so just watch that it's okay added to the list um, you never are watching a movie and it says Directed by Ang Lee, and you're like, oh yeah, no shit, it was directed by. It's not like you know Christopher Nolan or like. Oh no, there is actually, David Fincher. There is no fingerprint. He's got no like no like super recognizable style, which I love in cases like this because it means that you're able to do so many things. Like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and Life of Pi, and Brokeback Mountain, and this. That's, yeah, that's the whole spectrum. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, that's everything. Because Life of Pi is one of the most beautiful movies I've ever seen. I've never visually. Seen, I've never seen Life of Pi. It wasn't my favorite. My mom was weirdly obsessed with it. Really? Yeah, I didn't get it. But <laughs> I mean, I I got the movie. Right, I didn't get right. her obsession. Right. But it is stunningly beautiful because a lot of it is sort of like dreamy. Like okay. In a dreamy yep. headspace. Mm -hmm. Isn't but, there a know. tiger in a boat? There sure is. Oh, look at that yeah. tiger in a boat. <laughs> that sounds like it should be a song. <clears throat> it probably is. <laughs> There's probably some. Like Spotify rapper. Probably. Or who's, TikTok person. Who's got it, yeah. TikTok, get on it. There you go. So, did you want to talk about any of the lady clothes before we... Kate Winslet should just always be in green. Sure, yeah. I really liked all of Margaret's. I know we didn't get a ton, but I really yeah. liked... Um, they she had would... a lot of boxy. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, really lovely shape. Boxy shade. neckline, not boxy. <laughs> yeah. Those fucking bonnets, man. No, the bonnets are, are bad news all so, around. So, so bad. But I love, I think, mm, no, this is probably right in the middle when, like, the Regency fashion just is, like, yeah. not it for me. Um, but everything looked really pretty. Oh, we didn't talk about Lucy Seal. Oh, the, no, The reason didn't. where yeah. my brain went with that is she had that jacket, mm. the the violet jacket with those tassels. Yeah. That looked wild. I don't know if I <laughs> loved it or I hated it. Because it just, I, I, I think I liked it because of the design. Um, and it was really interesting, especially when she was walking out of the room, the way that the the back of the dress just kind of waterfalled down to the floor and mm -hmm. the gathering up towards the top and the hats. <laughs> just There's the a hat lot fashion. a lot of hats. I do. I do love the notion of a hat pin. Yes. That's very fun. Mm -hmm. But I think my favorite look in this is um, Eleanor at the party at the ball in London. It's this like, um, God, it's it's not even lilac or lavender or anything. It's like a darker light purple. Mm hmm. And it's got like ribbony embellishment yes. all along it. And mm -hmm. I, the my biggest complaint is like, no cap sleeves. Let's not do cap sleeves. Yes. What if we just never, ever did cap sleeves again? I 100% support that. Yeah. Yep. But my, that's mean, my favorite. Like, little lower, but no, yeah. I 100% support that. Mm -hmm. The men's fashion is just. Oh, yeah. What? Just 100% across the board. Phenomenal. Every time Alan Rickman like moseys up with his horse, I'm just like, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. get it and mrs jennings i felt like she, what a busybody we love her she, she's she is like she is a well-meaning busybody though oh yes she is not like uh, there's got to be one that's like not well-meaning in one of the other ones but i can't place anybody's name right now there are not well-meaning busybodies in the other ones well i feel like mrs bennett well sure she's a manic busybody. She, <laughs> she is but she, she again is not. She's not ill-meaning. No, she's just too much, too much yes. of it. But I think Mrs. Jennings really falls on the right side of that line. Yes, she's I, like I fun about it. Yeah, and I, th I found her to be fashionable, um, even though she was a woman of a certain age, especially yeah. in that time period. Well, she had the money, so she could like stay up with the fashions. But then we need to talk about the people who are actually my favorite in yes. this movie, yes. which is Amelda Staunton and Hugh Laurie, <laughs> the Palmers. Okay, so good. So um, Emma Thompson evidently wrote, like, in the screenplay, wrote the roles with them in mind oh. because they had played husband and wife in something previously. Oh, I love that. So she actually wrote a lot of it with people. She wrote Edward with Hugh Grant in mind mm -hmm. as well. Um, so it's they are so funny because Imelda Staunton is um, Mrs. Jennings' daughter. 
Mm -hmm. And so she like married her off to Hugh Laurie. The bargain. Yeah. Well, (laughs) okay. I mean, she was a bargain. Look, that character is a bargain. (laughs) I love Imelda Staunton. She is not on par with Hugh Laurie. No. So, but I mean, it appears that they have like an okay relationship, except for that he just openly despises her. <laughs> Which he, she just goes, I wish this rain would stop. And he's across the room reading his paper and he just goes, I wish you would stop. <laughs> so good. Hysterical the entire time. And the only time he's even remotely human is at the at the end of their story when they are leaving to take the baby away and he's like being nice to Eleanor and he's like, if you require me to stay, I'll stay and help and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, no, I'm just obsessed. Any time that we get her just screaming, just like screeching while she's like running amok yeah. in any movie, I love she's it She's so also much. just like this big. So she's it's so hilarious tiny. watching her like traverse this long hallway. Yeah. So funny. No, love you really, so you should try to find a clip um, of her performing in Gypsy because okay. she was very, very yeah. good. Good, super good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean... I think that kind of brings me mostly to the end of my stuff. I think I think one of the things I like the best about Jane Austen in general is that she the like moral of her books was like was literally like be like nice to people mm-hmm. and you'll get the good thing. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly right. Mm-hmm. I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. Oh, um Fanny Dashwood absolutely beating the shit out of Lucy Steele. Yeah, we need yeah. to talk about Lucy. Yeah. We need to talk about Lucy. She got on my goddamn nerves. Oh, yeah. As soon as she walked up and you called her, and I quote, garage sale Amy Adams, which is my favorite. Yeah. Sorry to her. Sorry to that woman. But. Yeah. What is true. her name? Imogen Stubbs. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, Imogen. Yeah. I apologize. But I mean, you know, garage sale Amy Adams is. Still a compliment. Still great. Yeah, because Amy <laughs> Adams is amazing. I would love to be a garage sale version of her. I, I don't even mean the acting, just her whole face. Yeah. Is yes. Like no, no, no. Not even, no, the, just her face. <laughs> just her face. But yeah, no, as soon as she walked up, I mean, she was putting it on mm-hmm. with a capital P. Yeah. So, I mean, I just kind of knew, like, I am just not here for this woman, like, from the beginning. But just because she was just, like, always up in her ear mm-hmm. and just, like, always whispering all the time about her engagement to Edward. You just got us way more, a lot of followers with that ASMR. Well, it was on Patreon. <laughs> I'm obsessed. So I'm watching the show. Yeah, that's it. That's all. <laughs> um, no, I totally agree. Also, it was to the point where I was like, I was like, I don't remember what her deal is in the book. And she is like actually conniving. She looks it. Like I mean, she's like she's doing it on purpose. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, she is doing everything except twirling her mustache. Yeah. Because essentially all she's after is the money, which oh, is yeah. why she so easily throws over Edward for his brother, Robert. Yeah. yeah. I'm just surprised. It seemed weirdly out of character for her to, like, be okay to be engaged for five years. But, I mean, if if he was that large of a prize, yeah. then, like, maybe. But she just seems like someone who wouldn't be down for the long haul. Yeah. Well, they also were, uh, according, especially according to Edward, they were, like, quite young yeah. when they, like, formed this attachment. And so... You know, his mind obviously had changed. And he even says at the end, he was like, I acted rashly. <laughs> like I, <laughs> mm-hmm. I professed too much feeling when I didn't actually have it. And so, yeah, I don't know. It was just, yeah, Lucy Steele. No, no thanks. No. She's almost as bad as, um, oh, God, Mrs. Elton from Emma. Oh, yeah. That's a that's a ill-meaning busybody. Oh, yes. Yeah. She's an ill-meaning and one. And I feel like any time a woman in one of these Austin novels ask to take a turn Mm -hmm. I just would always want to say no because I feel like just such bad information is told while you're taking a turn yeah I don't want to take a turn about the room Caroline Bingley (laughs) yeah I'm gonna sit this one out next one though girl next one but I mean it's just you could almost like kind of see the knife going Mm -hmm. like underneath her arm yeah and just twist and twist and twist and she just is a bummer yeah she's a pretty big bummer yeah well good luck with the lesser of the bear is it Ferris? Ferrers. Ferrers. F E R R A R S. Ferrer. Ferrers. Would you like a Ferrer? Oh, goodness. Oh, man. Okay. So, yeah. Success? Yeah. Yeah. You like absolutely. Two yeah. thumbs up. I've always been two thumbs up for this movie. So, yeah. <clears throat> I'm just, I'm reliving my like nine, 10 year old 
yeah. experience. So you know what we should do? We should just do you and me should do like every Austin adaptation. I like that. Yeah. Yep. Let's put that on the books. Yep. So on the list. There we go. Watch this space for more Austin adaptations. Yay. We could do all like Austin spinoffs and stuff. Have you ever seen the Jane Austen book club? No. Okay. Okay. On the list. I okay. love it. All right. Well, that will be it for us. As we mentioned before, you can follow us on Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash so I'm watching the show. Throw us a couple bucks. We'll make you more stuff. It'll be amazing. Um, other than that, you can follow us on Twitter at so I'm watching or Instagram at so I'm watching this show. And we also have the website, so I'm watching.com, which links out to everything. Yay! Yay! And then go subscribe on YouTube. Yes. And subscribe to Rachel on YouTube, too. Yes. Uh, you can find me at Raynut, R A E N U T T. I talk about makeup stuff, teach you how to do stuff. Um, you can also visit my website, Raynut.com, and book um, an online consultation with me. And we can just hang out one on one and we yeah. can talk about makeup stuff and movie stuff if you want to. Sure. So to, to get her to teach you how to do. A makeup look from a movie. Yes, I can do that. Do it. Yep, well, I, I she doesn't like effects do makeup though. No, if I could talk you through old age makeup, but if there's spirit gum involved, no, I'm sorry, we don't have any spirit gum to speak of <laughs> in the house. So. No, <laughs> not not gonna do it. So sorry, but I can send you to a website that can probably tell you how to do it. I'm just not that gal. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bye. We'll be back next time. Bye.